Christ Jesus is the one who died, yes rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for you, and nothing will separate you from his love. You belong to the one who will come again on a white horse, the one called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, will follow him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Welcome. My name is Jason Harris, and I'm the lead pastor here at Evangelistic Temple, which is what most of us around here refer to as ET for short. I'm standing here in the foyer of the main building at the Welcome Center, where if you come here for the first time on a Sunday morning, this is the first place you will walk into. There'll be people here to greet you and to make you feel as comfortable as possible. Before you do come, I believe it's important for you to know more about what we are about as a church. Well, let's start off with how it all began in the first place. My name is Jason Harris, and I'm the lead pastor here at Evangelistic Temple, also known as ET. The church began back in 1932 when a group of Christians got together and just started praying together. They started meeting on a regular basis just to pray that God would send revival to the Palestine area. And so during all their praying, they decided to bring in uh, an evangelist from Houston named A.J. Ritchie to come and hold a tent revival uh, that they planned on doing for just several days. Well, during this tent revival, God showed up in miraculous ways, and people were coming from all around the area. People were getting saved. Uh, people were getting healed. There were all kinds of supernatural things that were going on. This became a big deal at the time here in Palestine. And what had originally been planned to last just for a few days ended up lasting several weeks as the power of God just but continued to, to flow and be displayed in, in what was going on at that time. Well, after a while, the people got together and they decided that they felt that the Lord was leading them to establish a permanent church there. And so in place of the tent, they put up walls and they built the church that and named it Evangelistic Temple. And uh, for, for several years, they were under the um, denomination of the Assemblies of God. And then around the mid-1990s, uh, they decided to come out from under any uh, structural denomination and became non-denominational. God has continued to move. I mean, what he started way back in 1932 in that tent meeting, we believe is still going on today as people are still coming to salvation, still coming to experience the, the power of God and his kingdom at work here that Jesus in, inaugurated. Being a non-denominational church, people often uh, wonder what it is that we actually believe here um, as a church. We are an evangelical church, and so we do believe in the fundamentals of the gospel, that God uh, came to earth in the person of Jesus to uh, pay for our sin when he died on a cross that he died and he was buried in a tomb and three days later he rose from the dead. He came to do what we could not do in order to um, have that relationship with God that we were created for because sin prevented that from happening but Jesus came and, and took care of that problem. Uh, we believe in the Holy Spirit um, we believe in uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, th that we read about in the New Testament, but we do believe that those gifts are to be uh, practiced and operated in a very orderly manner according to Scripture. Um, as far as our uh, uh, doctrinal beliefs, um, 
you could say that we are we align more up with reformed theology um, rather than Armenian. Uh, that simply means that we believe that salvation is by faith alone and that it is all God's doing. Uh, we speak a lot about the sovereignty of God. Um, uh, we believe that Jesus is going to return again one day and restore all things to himself and that we are going to live with him forever. Uh, those are some of the fundamental basics uh, of what we believe as a church. Of course, there are uh, other uh, minor differences that churches has, have in certain things, and you can actually go on the church website and, and read more about some specific stances we take as far as what we believe as a church on different scriptural things. But um, we just uh, love Jesus and we love one another. These pictures on the wall here are from that original tent meeting way back in 1932. And I love looking at these pictures and just being reminded of the rich heritage that we have here at ET. And it also makes me thankful that 85 years later, we still get to be a part of something that God is doing that he started way back then. Let's find out more about what God is doing through the various ministries that we have here at ET. One of the things that we talk a lot about here at ET and we emphasize is relationships. Not just relationship with Jesus, but really relationship with one another. We believe that that's what God created us for and what He has called us to really be about as a church. And one of the ways that we have uh, developed for people to be able to pursue those kind of relationships with one another is through our life group ministry. Our life groups come in many different forms. It may be small groups of people meeting together for Sunday school on Sunday morning or one of our uh, topical Bible studies on Wednesday night or meeting outside of church in one another's homes. But let's learn a little bit more about our life group ministry. My name is Danny Rodriguez. I'm associate pastor here at Evangelistic Temple. I have the privilege of working with life groups. Here at Evangelistic Temple, there are three different types of life groups that I wanna make you aware of. One is an ongoing process. I mean, it's every Sunday morning. Uh, this, this li these life groups come together every week between the two services, between our early service and then the second service. There's a, a Sunday school. And uh, I'm referring to it as life group because uh, really the heartbeat there is even though there's a teaching that's going on, uh, the desire is that uh, it's more than just teaching. Uh, but it's relationships are being built and, and people are being encouraged to, in their walk with the Lord to, and to share those experiences with one another in those, in those times together there on Sundays. The second is on a Wednesday evening and that runs a little different. It's on a 13 week session. Uh, we have very specific studies that we are looking at. In those studies, uh, for example, we offer the, the B3 courses. Now, B3 has to do with our vision here, uh, believe, uh, which is believing in Jesus, uh, belong, uh, belonging to the body of Christ and build, building His kingdom. We have taken each one of those statements in our vision and actually developed a class around each one. So on Wednesday evenings, we have those small groups that are coming together. Another thing you might find in, in uh, even example of what we did this last session was a, a class on marriage. Things like that you're going to find on Wednesday evenings when we, when we have those groups that are available. Uh, but there's also another type, and that's our home groups. Um, home groups are uh, there, as they state, in the home. And uh, much like the Acts 2 model, where it's referring to the church, um, where the uh, many were saved and came together and they had um, uh, held to the teachings of the apostles, they fellowshiped, they broke bread together and they prayed together. Those are the kind of things you're going to see in a home group. And um, so, once again, all of that designed and put in place so that relationships can be built, lives can be strengthened and encouraged in their walks with God. Life groups are important to me because uh, of what my wife and I experienced when we first came here to this church. Uh, when we uh, walked into the sanctuary and we saw all of the people here in this church, I'll be honest with you, we were a little overwhelmed. Um, we loved the service. We felt uh, like there was such a, a beautiful atmosphere here and, and we wanted to be here. Uh, and we knew some folks here, but, but it was interesting to us that uh, we could come and leave and come and leave and, and 
didn't really necessarily connect right off the bat. Life groups changed that for us. When we, when we connected into a life group and, and really started meeting on a regular basis with, with uh, different individuals, um, it really was uh, so beautiful for my wife and I. And, and I'll be honest with you, we've got uh, dear relationships today because of uh, our experience with life groups. They say our culture is more connected than it has ever been, but it is also lonelier than it has ever been because we have missed that face-to-face -face personal contact with one another. And so I love the fact that our life group ministries are providing a way for us to have that personal kind of relationship, that personal contact that I believe God created us for. Although I love what is happening in these smaller groups, what I really like is when the whole congregation gets together for corporate worship. So let's find out what happens when we get together for that. My name is Darren Goodman and I'm the worship pastor at Evangelistic Temple. Here at Evangelistic Temple, we try to offer as, as great a, an experience in worship as, as possible. We have two services. Our first service uh, at uh, 8.30 Sunday morning is a uh, more traditional service uh, for those who love the hymns and are, are moved by those and, and uh, prompted to worship through those, those wonderful hymns. And then at 1045 we have our contemporary service for those who are, are more drawn to worship through uh, the, the praise courses and, and songs of, of that nature. We, try, we strive to uh, present worship in a way that, that is appealing to all and that, and that all can engage in. Worship is more than, than singing, it's more than playing instruments, it's, it's more than, than sitting in a building and, and watching an event take place before you. Uh, worship is intimacy with God. It's one-on-one, -on -one. it's between you and the Lord. The Bible puts it this way, um, let us continually offer up the praise of thanksgiving to the Lord, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. It's easy to be authentic in worship when you realize that, that, that it doesn't originate with you. God's the one that causes that, and it's through that relationship with Him that you find that place of authenticity. Uh, it's Him that drives you. The, he's the breath. He's the life. He's everything. Uh, without Him, we're nothing. My, my greatest efforts and greatest accomplishments are, are as filthy rags. We're not to forget to do good deeds. We're not to forget to do good things because others see those actions and see our lifestyle outside of the church. And, and they see how we're living for the Lord and, and how He's providing and taking care of us and our love for Him and, and that draws them in to want to, to have what you have. And it's also sharing, uh, sharing life, um, sharing others' you know, problems, uh, you know, encouraging one another, strengthening one another, bearing one another's burdens. That's, that's truly what worship is all about. John 4.23 tells us that the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. God is a triune God. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is the recipient of our worship. Uh, Jesus, the Son, um, is the truth, and the Holy Spirit is the breath that drives us and empowers us to worship God. I'm amazed at the musical talent that exists in this church. But it's not the talent alone that makes worship so special here. It's the heart that those who lead us in worship have for the Lord and have for what worship ministry is to be about. Darren and his team definitely have hearts that are in the right place. Right now, we're gonna to go to a part of the church that is near and dear to my heart because for 11 years, I served as the youth pastor here before I became the lead pastor. So let's go on over to the youth building and see what all God is doing in our teenagers. Hello, my name is Casey Vickers. I'm the youth pastor here at Evangelistic Temple. Here at Evangelistic Temple in our youth ministry, we really try to focus on the relationship building. We, we, we have a lot of age groups represented here from age 6th grade to 12th grade, so there is a wide dynamic that we, that we minister to here. But even in that, even with that big dynamic, we're still very intentional on getting on a one-on-one -on -one basis with your child, showing them the importance of the gospel, showing them the goodness of Jesus and, and how that can impact everything that they are, not just their spiritual life, but their physical life, their emotional life, and every aspect of, every, of what, they, what they deal with every day, how they carry themselves. They face hard times, they face pressures and trials that, that affect them in so many different ways. And a lot of places try to avoid this and sugarcoat life. Well, that's not helping anybody. 
it's not helping anybody when you sugarcoat things and tell them, give them false hope or give them, give them a, a false sense of direction of what life is supposed to be like. Life is not always easy. And when you talk about being authentic, especially with youth, you have to be real with them. You have to let them know that you face some of the same issues they face, that you're walking the same path that they've walked, that you have some of the same struggles that they struggle with. We don't avoid the hard things. We, we don't try to skip over uh, the things that people face every day and talk about the real issues that we, that, we, that we encounter. We dive right into them. We let everybody know that you're not alone in these struggles, that we're right here doing life with you, walking hand in hand with you. But most importantly, we have a lost and dying world around us that need the good news of Jesus, that need to know about how Jesus works in families, how he works in schools, how he, he wants us to belong and how he wants us to build his kingdom. So these things all go hand in hand and it all starts with making disciples. I believe discipleship is the key to all these things. Once you're building disciples, and that's exactly what Jesus has called us to do, to go and to build disciples, to teach and to, and to preach and to learn, to, to, to do these things in his name. Jesus told us in, in, in his word in John chapter 14 that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. So as you can see, we've got a lot going on in youth ministry. I just love the way that Casey is able to connect with these teenagers. One of the reasons why our youth ministry is so strong is because a lot of these kids first spent their time in our children's ministry. So let's go over there and I'll show you what's going on in the children's area. My name is Jennifer DeFries and I'm the director of children's ministries here at Evangelistic Temple. Evangelistic Temple's children's ministry is called ET Kids Ministry, and we have some amazing classes that we offer for children. Um, one of them is our nursery, where we um, have the babies and the infants on Wednesday and Sundays. And our teacher in that class name is Elaine Collins, and she's actually uh, been serving ET as the nursery director for 17 years. So she's been with us a long time and knows a lot about how to run that class and just loves those babies. Another thing that we have that I get really excited about is Kid Zone on Wednesday nights. Um, it's age six to 12 years old and we just um, have fun at the beginning and fun at the end. We play games and get silly, get crazy, you know, listen to music um, and just build the relationship with the kids that come in. But my favorite part is when we when we do worship and then we sit down on the floor in a circle and I teach my lesson and we just talk about Jesus. We talk about how the Old Testament and the New Testament are all pointing to him and how he is he is the star of the story. I teach from a historical standpoint because I don't want them to lump Jesus into whatever book they're reading from the library at school. I want them to know that this is history and that we have a savior you know? And so I teach from that standpoint and we talk deep theology in there and you would think seven and eight and nine and ten year olds could not do that but they can and I'm amazed by every week how you know they can they can just see the the metaphors and the and the you know all the different um, ways that we can see God and Jesus throughout the word and I just love it. Another great ministry that we have is called Bible Drill Ministry. And it's on Wednesday nights and it's before Kid Zone. It's for ages third grade to sixth grade. And um, a session for Bible Drill actually goes from September of one year to April of the next year. And during that time period, we actually teach them all 66 books of the Bible. And we teach them 20 key verses. That, that just put the tools in their hand. They memorize those and, and they've got the tools to share the gospel to people at school, to their parents, to their community. And it's just important to me that they understand that they don't have to wait until they're 18 or 21, 30 to share the gospel. They can share it right now. And so we just put those tools in their hand and empower them to go out and, and basically the Great Commission. In ET Kids Ministry, the goal is to empower the parents and encourage the parents to be the spiritual leaders of their home. We want to join them and work alongside them and to bring in their children closer in relationship with Christ. Um, just to, to let them know how crucial their role is as the parent in the spiritual nurturing of their child and that they are really ultimately the ones to do that and that we just want to be here to support. For any child who comes through the ET Kids Ministry, there are really three things that I want them to understand and to take away from their experience here, and that is one, that God loves them, 
immensely in that he sent his son to die for them. Two, that we love them unconditionally with no strings attached. And three, that God is sovereign and he has a special purpose for each and every one of them. Part of our purpose here at ET that we believe God has called us to be about is coming alongside families and helping strengthen individual families in the church. And that involves recognizing the fact that the primary responsibility of teaching the children God's Word and His ways, that responsibility falls on the parents. And so in no way do we look at our children's ministry, or our youth ministry as a way to replace the, the responsibility of the parents, but it is just a supplement to what should already be going on in the home. And I just love the fact that Jennifer shares that vision, and that's her heart, is to come alongside families and help them, rather than trying to replace what they should be doing. Now from here, let's go find out what God is doing with the men at Evangelistic Temple. My name is Danny Rodriguez. I'm an associate pastor here at Evangelistic Temple. I have the privilege of working in the men's ministry. At Evangelistic Temple, our vision is believe, belong, and build. We believe that Jesus is Lord, that uh, we have the privilege of belonging to His family, and we're called to build His kingdom. Of course, we're talking about building relationships and, and encouraging uh, brothers in the Lord, and, and even sharing the gospel and seeing lives transformed and changed and, and the kingdom of God being built that way. But it's also in a practical way as well, where uh, I'll give you an example. We had some men that, that gathered together, loaded up, went down to Beaumont uh, because of the flood situation and, and uh, actually went in and helped rebuild a home for a family that was there. Uh, it wasn't about just building, uh, framing up walls. We're, we're building hope in a family that, that's in dire need. So it, it, that building the kingdom can be reflected in many ways. And, and that is our desired men's ministry that, that we... Uh, grow spiritually, that we build spiritually, but then we also affect a community in real practical ways as well. Uh, years ago, uh, I had the privilege of starting to walk with, with brothers that uh, really we're going on 20 years of having walked together and doing life together as, as Christian brothers, and I love them dearly. Uh, I think it's so important that men get together and, and just share their hearts with one another. There's nothing like being sitting, like sitting around a campfire and, and just opening up your heart with another brother that can stand with you and pray with you. Uh, we, we need to understand that we can hear the Lord. He desires to speak to us. And God will often uh, use uh, the brothers around us to, to, to share uh, things that He's trying to communicate to us. Uh, I believe that every man should have someone that's pouring into their lives, mentoring them. Uh, every man should have those that he walks beside and, and is, is uh, interacting with. And then I believe that every man at some point should begin to pour into other men. And, uh, and I just think that's very critical. I think about my own life uh, growing up as a, as a young man. I had an old young life leader that had poured into my life so much and, and mentored me in so many ways. Even after I got married, he would call uh, just to see how I was doing as a husband and uh, want to know my perspective on how I was being as a father. Uh, but then he would ask to speak to my wife to get her perspective on that and then my children. And then he'd get back on the phone and, and rebuke me and, and tell me things that I could do better. So I, but you know what? I appreciated that. I needed that man pouring into my life. Reaching men with the power of the gospel is a huge passion of mine. And being a family-oriented church the way ET is, it really becomes important because statistics have shown that if Jesus captures the heart of the man of the house, it has a tremendous effect on the rest of the family. But it's not just our men's ministry that God is doing a great work in. He's also doing it with our women as well that we call our Embrace Ministry. So let's go over there and learn more about that. My name is Loda Clark. I am the spokesperson for Women's Embrace at Evangelistic Temple. In Embrace Ministry, our goal is to bring women together in close relationship, to feel this family connection. Women need women. We love to pray together, we love to serve together, we love to worship together, and Women's ministry allows us to do that. We also 
We try to bring projects such as the blankets of praise, which we took the blankets to the nursing homes and to um, the people in our church that are homebound, just to let them know that we still care about them and that we love them. And that's, that gives us an opportunity to share, to share Jesus with them and let them know that they are loved. Women's Embrace aligns our, our ministry with the Believe and Belong and Build of Evangelistic Temple. I went through the, the three B's and we talked about to believe and we believe the Word of God and we believe that it is infallible. Um, and I do believe that. I believe that the Word of God is the truth. Um, we belong Oh, that's, that's my favorite part because we belong to a fellowship of women and we are building those relationships and that's good. God wants us to be a part of a family, not separate. And I, to me, that's important. And then to, to build, we build in the community. We bring in, um, we take our love and we share it with others. You know, women, we have Marys and Marthas. Our Marthas love to serve. They like to be behind the scenes, and we offer that. There's a lot of behind the scenes things. And then there's times when we need Marys, just to sit with someone in the church and share their heart with, or just to listen. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish. I tell you, Loda and her team sure do an amazing job of ensuring that the women here at ET not only have a place to connect with one another, but also a place to use the gifts and abilities that God has given them. And that's really what we envision for everyone here at ET. You see, I believe that every person that is a part of this church body is here, not because of us, but because of God that He is the one who led them here because He placed inside each individual specific gifts, talents, abilities, and life experiences that are needed in order for us to fulfill the vision that God has given us. I believe the church just as much, if not more so, needs each individual just as much as each individual needs the church. So if you're looking for a place to connect or a place to use the things that God has given you in the expansion of His kingdom and the glory of His name, then come check out Evangelistic Temple because it just might be the place where you belong.